Alright, let's get started. Now we're looking at the master project settings. These are probably the first settings you should be looking at before you start working on a project. It is vital that you set up your resolution and frame rate before you start importing footage as your frame rate cannot be changed after a project has been created. As for the resolution, DaVinci Resolve is resolution independent, meaning that you will still be able to make changes afterwards and all of your windows, tracks, sizing data and keyframes will be updated accordingly. You also have the option of changing your pixel aspect ratio, but this only applies to older SD standards. So if I was to turn on NTSC, for example, I can now switch between a 16x9 or a 4x3 display pixel. With current HD standards, this will no longer be necessary. By the way, if you try to drag in footage onto your timeline and it doesn't match your frame rate, you will receive a dialog box prompting you to change your sequence settings. You also have the slightly different playback frame rate option. This has no effect on your original footage, but rather controls how it is output to your monitor. This is very useful if you have something like a 50 hertz monitor, which would play better at 25 frames per second, or it could also be useful if you're trying to play back slow motion footage at an alternative frame rate. The image processing sets your bit depth, which by default is always 32 bit floating point. You can also choose amongst the different color sciences offered by DaVinci Resolve. You do have your standard YRGB setup, but you can also move on to ACES, a standardized color science, if you have hardware that supports it. Lastly, you can enable field processing if working with interlaced footage. Next, we have our video monitoring options. These will only affect how the video looks on your external monitor. So you can choose to change the resolution and frame rate. You can then specify the nature of the video output on your computer, and you can choose whether you're using video or data levels when it comes to your color range. Video supports broadcast displays, which support a Rec. 709 video standard. Data levels will output the full range of the video signal, but can only be displayed on monitors that support 10-bit data. These two will look very different on a monitor, but will ultimately not affect the look of your film. 10-bit is a lot more processor intensive than 8-bit, but will give you a more faithful representation of the colors and not show banding. You have the option to change your monitor scaling from basic to bilinear. This is good if you have footage with vertical, horizontal, or diagonal lines that are experiencing artifacts during scaling. You can choose to hide the user interface overlays if you're having problems with real-time playback. And by default, show all viewers on video output is turned on. If you're having lag issues, you can turn this off to ensure that only the color page displays the video. The Conform Options menu refers to how source media will behave when matched to EDL files. Most of the time when using EDLs, you want to use a timecode that's embedded in your source clips. Sometimes you don't want to rely on that timecode, so you can choose to switch to the frame count of the clips instead. If a clip hasn't successfully transferred onto the timeline, you can choose to replace it with a slug. This isn't always ideal because you'd probably like to see a warning telling you that there's a non-conformed clip rather than risk losing a piece of your edit to a black gap. When you conform the EDL, you can also choose to assign real names to your footage based on any one of these options. If there is footage that is no longer available, you can choose to reconnect those clips to any offline media that might be on your drive. The thinking behind this is that people would probably prefer to have a lower quality of their video in the timeline rather than no video at all. Lastly, you can pick the format for your conform. You are recommended to use the Resolve format for all NLEs, including Premiere Pro and Smoke. For Final Cut Pro 7 and X, you have your separate options. Once you're done setting up your project, make sure you click Save, and we'll be looking at image scaling next.